Hey everybody, we're back at the radical phase of the French Revolution, part two. I believe the last time we left off, the National Convention had created a 12-person board called the Committee of Public Safety to attempt to protect the gains made by the revolutionaries. And they had appointed a name, a, a, a gentleman by the name of Maximilian Robespierre to head this 12 person board up. So let me go ahead and uh, take my seat here because uh, I'm about to show you a few things on the board here again today. But um, I think I showed you my symbol last time. Uh, there he is, Louis the 16th, going to the guillotine. Um, but if you look right here under my key events, um, the reign of terror, guys. The reign of terror is, it's really a portion of the radical phase of the revolution. It lasts about a year, give or take. And really what it was, was a reaction against two traditional uh, symbols of French authority, the Catholic Church and the French monarchy. So um, there, of course, are two more symbols I added. Of course, there's my church you know, being X'd out. And of course, over here, you have the crown representing the monarchy being X'd out. So those were two of the um, institutions that were being attacked um, by these revolutionaries. And they were led by a gentleman by the name of Robespierre. Robespierre um, was a prominent lawyer. He had risen to fame, really, um, representing former members of, of the Third Estate. And was you know widely read in Enlightenment ideas, and in many cases tried to bring Enlightenment type ideals of equality and fairness and justice to the cases that he brought. But he's going to be the person that rises up. He's a great orator, great speaker, and he rises up in this national convention and gets a point appointed as part of this twelve member committee of safety, and and ultimately becomes the leader. So um. What are some of the things that they did? Well, I said, you know, two institutions they attacked, right? The monarchy and the church. Well, there were many, there were many cities um, outside of Paris that uh, were traditionally strongholds of the monarchy and had a lot of people that supported the monarchy. So in many cases, there were people in those cities, um, thousands upon thousands of people in those cities that were put to death either by the guillotine or when that, when that method proved to be too slow. Um, some were shot into mass graves. Others were rounded up, um, tied up, put on barges, taken out in rivers and drowned. Um, and so, you know, unfortunately, you know, that's not going to be the last time we hear of, of those stories throughout history. Um, but those are just some examples of various spots throughout France, cities that, again, had been strongholds of the monarchy where those people were violently attacked. You also had people in Paris uh, going to the guillotine, um, in many cases by the hundreds and thousands. It's interesting, uh, here, again, here's my, my symbol, the guillotine. It's interesting, you know, the guillotine initially, believe it or not, was actually created to be a more humane way of execution. Because, you know, in, in former centuries, uh, beheading, <clears throat> beheading had been reserved for the nobility. Um, for the common person, there were all sorts of cruel, inhumane, horrible, horrific um, ways of, of ending someone's life. But, you know, with the revolutionaries being um, idealistic and high on enlightenment type thinking of fairness and equality, you know, the guillotine was, was created uh, as a means of making, you know, having people equal in life and then having them also equal in death. So it was actually considered a more humane way of, of ending someone's life. But um, so they attacked, so they attacked um, cities outside of Paris that were monarchical uh, strongholds. They also <clears throat> attempted a, <clears throat> excuse me, a program called de-Christianization. Of course, um, the goal there was to get people away from thinking from a religious per perspective and to try to get people thinking in terms of more of a secular uh, perspective based on science and reason and logic. And so they did things like burned and looted churches. They created a new calendar. Instead of having a seven-day week where the seventh day was Sunday, 
you now have three 10 day weeks. You know, the goal was to, at some point, get people to forget what Sunday even was, I guess. Um, they would uh, change, change street signs. Any sign that had the name Saint on it uh, would be changed. Um, they persecuted uh, members of the clergy. Again, they burned and looted churches. So all in an attempt to get people away from a religious mindset and more into a secular mindset based on reason and logic and science. So, um, of course, eventually, like all extreme behaviors, you know, um, people begin to think about the severity and the extremeness of what's going on. And, you know, as France begins to become more successful in their war against Austria and they begin to actually win, and as the economy begins to get better, there are elements in society and within the government, the National Convention, who begin to think, you know what, I think maybe this is a little bit too extreme and we need to back down from this. Well, Robespierre initially didn't want to do that. In fact, he, he picked up the pace of execution. So, um, you know, there's, there's some tension here, right? So, um, but eventually more and more people are starting to come to their senses and realize, you know what, we don't need this sort of extreme measure anymore. And ultimately what happens in the end is that Robespierre comes into the National Convention um, with another list of people who need to be going to the guillotine and the uh, delegates uh, from the convention rise up, arrest him and, and, and imprison him. And um, they put him in jail. And really, ultimately, the only way they can determine that this reign of terror is going to come to an end is by putting Robespierre to, to the end. So um, the ironic thing um, about this reign of terror is that Robespierre, ultimately, he gets sent to the guillotine. He gets sent to the guillotine, and he's put to death by the very means through which he used to end so many other people's lives. So that's sort of the irony with that. But um, that happens in July of 1794. And then, of course, as you move into 1795, um, you know, the terror begins to decrease. Churches begin to reopen. And we're going to ultimately move into this phase called the directory. And we'll get into that uh, in a future video. So anyways, um, hey, hope this was helpful. And... Um, uh, go back and view the uh, radical phase part one um, if you haven't seen that already and um, I'll look forward to getting back to you and we'll um, talk a little bit more about what happens during the phase of the directory okay bye